the BOJ, who's supposed to be protecting the public's interests, is so lazy, so lame, to look out for the customer. The private member's bill, which I tabled in 2017, in fact, and it was subsequently debated in February, in fact, February 13th, mm -hmm. 2018, at which time it was defeated by the government majority. That bill um, has provision for a minimum service package mm -hmm. for customers, in short. Yeah. And that minimum service package is this minimum service package basically say for these array of banking transactions, the customer should be charged no fee, such as making a deposit, making withdrawal, making inquiry into your account, um, and of course withdrawals and deposits can take different forms. Mm -hmm. It can through transfers, it can be through cash check deposit into your account, but the activities into your account. Because the, the, the principle behind that is that banking as, a, as an activity is a very privileged, privileged one mm -hmm. where the government grants a license to a banker and says you are authorized to take person's deposits, but do not stop there. Having taken, taken those deposits, you can unlend it as a business to make money. Mm -hmm. So a bank's business is the use of depositors' money. Mm -hmm. And anyone in banking knows that money goes in and they come out. So people put in the savings account, the current account, there are some portion that they're going to be using. Mm -hmm. And so you must have access to it because it's, it is kept there for safekeeping and to access. However, while it is kept, the bank has the legal authority to take it and lend it out to somebody else for making up money. And basically we're saying that for that benefit that accrues to the banker, a minimum level of service should be afforded the depositors. That is in short. Mm -hmm. So you must be able to access your monies or portions of it without a penalty. Mm -hmm. Because fees is are really a fancy term for penalty. Mm -hmm. To say if you want some of your money, there's a penalty for taking it. If you want to put more money into your account, there's a penalty for doing it, and they call it a fee. Now, what I find most unfortunate is that the Bank of Jamaica, more so than even the banks themselves, have bought into that to say service is not an integral part of what the banks do. And if you want service, it is extra that you have to pay for. So what is the service that is being afforded to a depositor? None. None. True. Because if you want service, it's going to cost, and so you must pay for it. What does the customer get, the depositor gets, in return for those, for putting the money into the bank? Mm -hmm. And the Bank of Jamaica has agreed with the banks that we, they're, going to, they're not obliged to provide any service. They are only there to take your money, and if you want to use the money, or to get the benefit of the money, you have to pay a fee. Just August last year, the British government passed into law one of the very provisions that I have in that private member's bill to say, one, and I went a little further, one, banks are obliged to make cash available within prescribed minimum radius. So in the rural areas, no more than three miles radius. Mm -hmm. For urban areas, no more than one mile radius. And they where they go further. In making these funds available, either through ATM or, or branches, there ought not to be any fee, any charge. Mm -hmm. Persons can access their money without any fee. The British government did it just recently. Why can't we do it? Well, you know, that's a good question. I believe it is unreasonable, and the government presides over this unreasonable practice by the banks. Mm. And I say the government because the BOJ, as a regulator, has the authority to institute standards under the Banking Services Act. Mm -hmm. It has refused or failed to do that up until when I tabled that other private member motion in December 
specifically as it relates to ATMs. Because what the standards you have heard um, announce has nothing to do with the private member's bill that I tabled before. Mm -hmm. It has to do exclusively with what the mandate is of the private member's motion that was tabled in December and approved in January. That requires the Bank of Jamaica to promulgate a set of standards that the, eight, the licensees of the BOJ, that is the banks, are obliged to provide as it relates to ATM machines. And I table that motion because of the outcry from the people. Um, much of what you spoke about, um, I've heard many of that. And I, I felt obliged to table that motion because amidst the outcry by the people, you never heard a whisper from the BOJ on the matter. You never heard a whisper from the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. nor the government of Jamaica on a whole. Mm -hmm. And that I find regrettable is that here, here we are, people across the country of all social class and grouping are suffering perpetually, inconvenienced. Bear in mind, you know, Ms. Virtue, that most, if not all, government workers and a lot of private sector workers, they don't get a check or cash in your hand anymore. Yeah. It is through an account. So if persons can't access the ATM, they can't access their hard-earned monies. Yeah. They can't get their salaries. And when many people are living from payday to payday, it makes it extremely difficult. And did you hear the Minister of Finance comment on that? Did you hear the governor of the Bank of Jamaica comment, comment on it? Not one whisper. That was the motive for that motion, mm. separate and apart from the one I had sitting before the parliament. Why can't you like flow, or not flow, the Office of Utilities Regulation? They say there are minimum standards for when light go out, it must come back within a certain time, or, you know, certain things. Why can't you have it for the banks? Why, why, why must they be exempt? That's something I can't understand myself. That's why I had the minimum standard requirement in the bill. And again, I, 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 I ask for that minimum standard as it relates to the ATM machines. Mm -hmm. that, that private member's motion in, 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 in December mm -hmm. was specifically about the ATM and the problem that the people are having. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're so correct. If you want more people to come into the banking system, then you want to provide a very attractive service and convenience Nobody's going to go into any arrangement that's going to impose inconvenience on them. Mm. And therefore, I can't see the logic mm. in the BOJ's thinking mm. or the logic in the absence of the BOJ's proactiveness in ensuring that the banks take the necessary steps that can help to drive more inclusiveness in banking. Um... um there's a digital currency mm -hmm. that the BOJ launched two years ago. And the take-up is minimal. The take-up is minimal. Right. Um, same question I ask. And I can only conclude that people remain highly distrusting of the banks and the banking system because they are seeing greatest failed people on a daily basis. It offers no level of convenience. It have got no, no, no level of reliability to them. Why should they get into it? So they are destroying the very goals that they are setting. So you think the Bank of Jamaica was shamed, um, named and shamed into having these standards, at least setting these standards mm -hmm. that have, they have recently announced? Well, I don't know if they are ashamed. They ought not to be. I would want them to think that, to see it as a wake-up call for them to be more proactive in ensuring that the banking public's interest is protected, their interest is facilitated as much as possible for a better commercial transaction. So I just can't understand it. And, you know, it was interesting that the BOJ was able to promulgate those standards for the ATM without any legislative action, meaning no laws 
it was only a resolution of the parliament, which they are bound to honor. Yes. Because when I table the resolution and it's, and it's passed, when I table the motion, rather, mm -hmm. and it is passed, it now becomes a resolution of parliament. Mm -hmm. It's not a Fitzjackson speaking anymore. Yes. It's a parliament speaking, and therefore they are obliged to follow what mm -hmm. the parliament demands. Mm -hmm. And so I really, too, interestingly, I'll say this. I am delighted that the government majority did not come into play because they could have voted against it. Mm -hmm. One argued that if they were sufficiently mindful as to the full impact of it, would they otherwise? But what is, I want to celebrate, mm -hmm. and the Jamaican people can celebrate this achievement that at least some standards are there. I have some difficulties mm -hmm. with some of the provisions in the standard. In the standards, Very but nice. we are one step further along that path. Mm -hmm. Before now, the banks did as they wish, when they wish, how they wish, and there is no recourse. And then the issue of recourse now is where the challenge lies. Because the governor is saying that they do not institute any financial penalty because they don't have the legal authority to do it. And the, the banks will be subject to what they call supervisory mm -hmm. consequences. Consequences. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell that means. Right? And I've been saying it publicly. I intend to ask them when they come before the committee. But I think it, 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 it's, it's unfortunate that the governor and the Bank of Jamaica knows the extent to which people are concerned about the bank's practices as it relates to ATM, that warrants and justifies standards being in place, but at the same time, do not put in place any consequences that can deter the banks from not complying. So you are of the view that the Bank of Jamaica has the authority to impose sanctions? Of course, they can have sanctions. Um, off the top of my head, one of the sanctions could, could be that if you, if you fail to comply with ABC, you know, your operations will be closed for a day or two or a week. Mm -hmm. So that's an indirect financial consequence mm -hmm. when you can't transact business. Okay. So if the bank, if the BOJ was really interested in ensuring compliance, it could use some of those. But I cannot say it doesn't because I don't know what supervised the consequences entail. Okay. And that's why I need that and clarification. That's not, that's not explained. Explicit. But I think between the announcement on the 2nd of, of August and today the 9th, one week later, is more than enough time. Because yeah. I've heard the public not, not, cry not about... 2nd of August. 2nd, second of, of April. Of April yes. My apology. 2nd mm -hmm. of April to now the, the 9th of April is a week that the governor and the Bank of Jamaica has had the opportunity to clarify that for the public, not for me, mm -hmm. for the public. And so they can feel more assured that the standards will be adhered to by the banks. Okay, so on this issue, um, what, is, what is the ultimate for you? What, what, what would make you happy and you say, okay, it's okay, I'm done, I don't have to go for it? Well, let me say, this, the, the provisions in the standards are quite substantial. And I applaud the BOJ for that. It, com it covers a number of pertinent areas. Mm -hmm. Downtime for the machine, um, the provision that they must put in place early warning when the, the, the currency levels are falling mm -hmm. so that they have enough time to restock the machines. Mm -hmm. um, they have one hour to restock um, within, the within the urban centers and three hours in the rural areas. Some people might say rural areas might be far, but they must have a warning system so they should know beforehand when those levels are falling mm -hmm. to restock, to even avoid it mm -hmm. becoming empty. And if they are derelict in not following those warning signals and cause it to be empty, then they have those time provisions. I think those things are good, mm -hmm. right? The other thing which I think is very important too is the real-time warning or information to account holders or card holders when machines in any particular area are down. It struck me why with this technology available to them, 
that they fail to institute things like those. Mm. So that when you, go, you travel across country to go to a machine, expecting it to be working, only to find out it's not working. You imagine, if it's that inconvenient for persons like you and I who drive a motor vehicle to have to be driving all over the place, you imagine what those persons who have to take public transport to go to those multiple places to get some cash. Well, I'm one of those who would have to take public transport. I don't drive. Well, you, well, you can very much appreciate what I'm I can. saying. And I you can. know, you know, you know. And especially when some of these machines are not working from Friday and on Sunday, you're still going there. Around. Yeah, making multiple trips and it's still not working. A parent who wants to buy a baby feed yeah. is put out. A, 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 a person who needs medication are put out. You know, what, I, what I'm a bit incensed about, you know, Erica, is the absence of sensitivity on the part of the government and the BOJ of the impact on persons' everyday lives mm. from these inconveniences. It, it, it behooves me. How is it? You know, because they have the convenience for themselves. They don't care about anybody else. Then if, if the government... He's not going to look out for its people. Who else? Who else? Yeah. Well, I, I go back to what you, you said, you know, about when the resolution came into Parliament, the, um, it was supported, both sides. Well, it, I wouldn't say it was supported. It was not objected to. Okay. Not quite the same. Okay. But all the members of Parliament have people who have issues with the, with the, with the banking system. So it would not suit anybody to, to oppose it. You know, it's interesting to raise that point because these issues we are talking about has no political boundary. The inconvenient the machine doesn't choose what part you belong to to decide not to work. Yeah. And all of us, all 63 of us who are members of parliament, we have a duty and an obligation to take all possible steps to ensure that the lives of our people on an everyday basis is as least inconvenient as is possible. Mm -hmm. It's the very least we can do for them. Mm. And it and it it it, it struggle, I, I struggle to appreciate, to understand why the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister, and the government as a whole have taken the decision, the conscious decision to cause their own people, our own people, to suffer, to become poorer at the expense of the super rich, the bank owners and their, and their top executives who benefit from multi-billion dollar compensations, right, at the expense of the unemployed, the pensioner, the student, the, the small business operator, the micro business operator, by charging them these multiplicity of fees to cause their pockets to become more loaded and then become more poor. Which bank is reported by the DOJ, DOJ is struggling to exist? Which bank is operating on the margin? None. They make multi-billion dollar profits every year of the backs of people who live on the margins. That is a fact. Mm. That is what this government presides over. That is what the governor and the Bank of Jamaica presides over mm. and refuse to take any step on its own that can mitigate. When I raised the bill, the bill came up for debate in 2018, the former Minister of Finance, Mr. Shaw, promised that a consumer protection, a financial consumer protection um, apparatus will be put in place. Good. I would welcome that. Uh, six years later, nothing has been promulgated in law. The current Minister of Finance made a similar announcement two years ago and under his tenure, nothing is in place. We are only promised promised. And every time there is anything to benefit owners of the multi-rich, the government does not, does not hesitate to take legislative actions. One example of that is recently 
we had the unfortunate situation of the um, armored vehicles being robbed. We had a spree of it some time ago. And there's a need for more armored vehicles to be made available. The government did not delay to remove the tax and, 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 um, and the vehicles by those who are purchasing them. I have no objection to that removal to facilitate the business. But you see, when it is to make it less expensive for the operators, it's done with expediency. When it is that the depositors are to benefit, it takes years to get anything done. And on those fees, it is continuing over six years now. Mm -hmm. In fact, more than six years. Because when the question was raised back in 2013, when I just tabled the bill, we knew of the problem. Michael Leachin said recently, though, that um, it's not a lucrative business for persons to invest in the ATM system. You, you, can't, you can't make money um, from that. Is that, is, is that um, a reason why you think we don't have as many ATMs um, in the geographical um, space as, as we should? You, know, you, you, you referenced the, the UK, one mile, three mile, that kind of stuff. What is unfortunate with that statement, or what is lucrative, all I will say, service must be an integral part of what the banks, banking industry provides. And whichever means you're going to use to provide service, meaning unencumbered access by people to their money, whether it is ATM or the banking hall, it's your call. We're not mandating which mechanism you use the most economic and the, the private sector most about its ability to be more efficient mm -hmm. how efficient are they with providing service no 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 tell me well they still have to wait they are the leaders and they curse the government workers and those in the public sector about how inefficient they are you look, take, look how long people have to do transactions in the banks. They have the gall to talk about, in, about efficiency. They have the gall to talk about modernization. They don't have the moral authority because in their own operations, they don't demonstrate that. It's one of the most inefficient operations because of what people have to go through. Look at, I drive... And I was across the western part of Jamaica on the weekend. And to see the long lines mm -hmm. that people stand at those ATM machines. The same banks that talk about service and efficiency subject people to stand in the sun and in the rain to access their money from their banks. So don't come tell me about service. Don't come tell me about inefficiency. Demonstrate it. Let it be a model. For the rest of Jamaica. They can't make that claim. Mm. And don't believe me. Ask the Jamaican people what their experiences have been. Yeah. I'm sure every single person in here has had um, that some, some problems you know, stand for a long time, an hour, in line waiting to access a machine. And then when you go up there, it run out of money just when you get I have there. had that experience too. Okay. For example, I go into an ATM machine. You wait for a long time because the person before you was making multiple attempts, hoping that the machine will work. Yes. So the person spends an extra time and he comes out with the machine not working. You know what I've decided to do personally? When I go into an ATM booth and I find that it's not working, I announce to everybody else behind me so that they are not subjected to standing in the line to wait to find out that it is not working. Yeah. And, you know, even to, 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 well, the, the standards requirement will give that to card holders to tell them which machine we are not working. Yeah. But what I'm interested to know, if you are with NCB, for example, and have a card, obviously you need to, 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 to um, use a machine. Mm -hmm. Is the real-time notification only to NCB account holders or everyone who, own a, who, own, who owns a card okay. throughout the banking industry? Okay. 
so that a Scotia Bank or Sagicor or anyone doesn't go to that. Because you know you can yes. go across banking for a that, fee. For a fee. Yes. And interestingly to touch about the fee, Erica. In that same banking services amendment act to deal with fees, one of the provisions in it is for where there happens to be a fee for using an ATM machine, the customer is notified of the charges relating to that transaction before the transaction is completed. So that the customer now is empowered to make a decision if they want to incur that fee or not. Mm. How unreasonable is that? You have to cause a regulation to come in place to even ask for something like that. And even in the banks, in the BOJ's regulation, I'm not certain if the notification about the fee is after the transaction or before. Because if, if the notification is after the transaction, you can't reverse that again, you know. No. And to, yeah. to get a refund, it's going to take you for eternity to get that from that bank. Yes. Why, why is it that the BOJ, who's supposed to be protecting the public's interest, is so lazy, so lame to look out for the customer?